Welcome. It is a little bit after 5.30 uh, to the regular city council meeting for the city of International Falls. Uh, if you would all please join with me, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, first item on our agenda is uh, the roll call. Please note that all members of the council are present. Next is to approve the agenda with any additions, deletions to the agenda. As I understand it, uh, we do not have any additions to the agenda this evening. So the chair would entertain a motion to accept the agenda as written. So, so we have a motion by Councillor Briggs. We have a second by Councillor... Deach. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we'll go to the minutes of November 16th, uh, regular city council meeting. We'll go on the minutes. We have a motion by Councillor Briggs for the minutes. Second. We have a second by Councillor Buller. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we go to the special city council meeting of December 3rd. Chair would entertain a motion for those minutes. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5 0. Next, we go to the payment of claims and uh, transfers. We have uh, $611.14 going from the general fund going to the lodging tax fund. Next, we have uh, uh, accounts payable claims. International Falls regular claims is $910,939.22. Airport commission claims $47,085.24. Airport reconstruction phase one claims four hundred and ninety five dollars. Phase two claims six hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and four dollars and one cent. And phase three claims of twenty four thousand five hundred dollars with no claims for the library board or the economic development authority uh, claim. With that, the chair would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Krause. Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 6 0. Next, we go to audience. Is there anyone in the audience that has anything to bring forward to the City Council? If you are on uh, blue jeans, you can unmute yourself and. Uh, um, identify yourself. Hearing none, you'll also have a chance at the end of this meeting. If you do have a question or you want to address the council, please make a message in the chat box so that we know that you're interested in speaking at later in the meeting. We have nothing under public hearing, no open uh, bid openings, no uh, old business, so we'll go to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a uh, um, unanimous vote for the, by the council. If it is not, uh, it does not pass. Uh, we have the Amex tax and duty free shops, eight gasoline pumps, haulers property maintenance snowplow license, Menards fireworks license, Rose Garden Restaurant License and Shoblum's Landscape and Nursery a Snowplow License. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those licenses as presented. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? Second. Oops. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next, under new business, approve no parking from 10.30 uh, a.m. to 3 p.m. along the south side of 3rd Street be, uh, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue for the Falls Hunger Coalition, Elks Lodge, 20, December 25th, Christmas Day, dinner curbside through a pickup window. Lois Lundin. We are asking... Uh, Can you come up to the microphone? Sorry. 
We are asking for permission to um, not have parking in front of the Elks Lodge so that we can have the Christmas Day dinner. Um, all meals will be served pick up or carry out. Um, no one will be dining inside. So in order to have traffic move through the city quickly and get people home, we'd like to have that open, that area open so that traffic can move, move through. So very similar to what we did for the uh, Exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay. So moved. Okay. So we have a motion by Councillor Buller. Second. second. We have a second by Councillor Briggs. Any questions that you may have? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I will vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very Pretty much. simplistic. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next is to request the 2021 uh, license renewals that include tobacco and alcohol. First, we have the Elks Club. Uh, it is a club license, restaurant license, Sunday liquor license. Timber Pins LLC has a on-sale liquor license, restaurant license, bowling alley license, Sunday liquor license, and a pool table license. And the VFW Club has a pool table license, a club license, gambling license, restaurant license, and Sunday liquor license, gam or, and a jukebox license. Chair would entertain a motion to approve those licenses. So, so move. We have a motion by Councillor Deach. Second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. And I will abstain. For the same reason, uh, we have three for the motion and two abstentions. Um, the motion will carry. Approve the um, ambulance service billing contract. It's a five-year contract uh, and HIPAA uh, business associate agreement with expertise billing. Chief Manasa, do you want to discuss this real quick with us? Even though your information was more than adequate. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've been using expertise building, billing for some time now, uh, I think about 2010-ish. Uh, we're very satisfied with their services, and uh, it's time to renew our contract. A couple notable things on this contract. It is a five-year contract. Um, just so that everybody is aware, that does mean it can be canceled by either party for any reason upon 60 days written notice. So. Uh, there's that. Uh, they're proposing $29 a run billing fee. We currently pay $27 a run, and we have for the last two years. And if you read in the contract, uh, pricing can be adjusted every two years. So that's right on par with where we we're at rate-wise. So okay. uh, I see no issue with not moving forward with it. All right. Uh, Council's consideration for that item. So moved. We have a motion by Councillor Buller. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Councillor Krause. Discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion carries 5-0. Next, approve a one-year service plan for the Physio Life Pack 15 monitors uh, for the four ambulance that, at a cost of $6,120. Chief Manasa. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Pretty straightforward, uh, looking for a maintenance contract for the life pack monitors. We have four of them. Uh, total cost would be $6,120. Uh, part of the reason this contract is only a one year long contract, I think I did attach the email in the packet here, but there's a component on here that is, they, they won't warranty longer until we upgrade. And of course they offered 50% off on an upgrade, just so you guys are aware. Each of these devices is roughly $25,000 a piece. So 50% off is twelve five, but we're still looking at twelve five per piece. So that's a, we did not have that kind of money um, sitting around and or budgeted to make this right now at this time. Uh, the only anecdotal comment I will make, I got an email from the same gentleman that sent this, Pete, on Friday asking what we were doing. I told him it was on the council agenda for this Monday. Thursday we did have a monitor that had problems so they are still covering it over under the last contract so um, we're right on the edge of service on a couple of them so that one happened to pop up last Thursday so yeah I, I guess I'll stand for any questions of, above and beyond that okay does anyone that please so this contract take effect the first of the year 
I think it's immediately. I think they write it for the first of the year, but they try and make it so there's no uh, break in service. How many, how many preventive maintenance checks do they do? They come year? up annually, but whenever we have an issue with the monitor, we'll okay. send it in. So like what's going on with the one that happened on Thursday, we've already shipped that out. So what we normally do is in the summertime, we rotate through all four monitors, they send up a loaner, and we individually send them, okay. send them back and get them back and they get recertified and used, or okay. maintenance, sorry. So it is yearly. Any other questions for uh, Chief Manasa? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the one-year service plan. So we have a motion by Councillor Bowler. Second. We have a second by Councillor Deach. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion carries. 5-0. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Um, any other business that uh, may come before the council? Okay, we'll go on to uh, the reports of the administrator, attorney, and department heads. City administrator. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, I have one bit of information I want to share with you. Um, tonight, I put a copy of Ordinance Number 26, uh, Fifth Series, which is an ordinance that the Council had adopted to annex additional property. In. This is primarily an informational item, but I wanted the council to be aware that um, we're preparing to get ready to resubmit our annexation application to the state. Um, so I've included the information attached to this, and um, I've had a conversation with the city attorney. So essentially what um, has changed since we initially adopted this is we did submit it to the state. They sent it back without further consideration because um, in the Exhibit A to the resolution, I'm sorry, to the ordinance, we did not have um, a plat of Goldville, which was referenced in the legal descriptions, and they said that was required to do. So you can see at the back of the packet I passed out today, we've included a plat of Goldville. There was also some confusion in terms of which legal descriptions on the exhibit applied to which parcel numbers, so the city attorney's office was good enough to shift the descriptions around. They didn't change them, but they reference or they're more easily um, correspond to um, parcel numbers within our system. So that was done. And then the final piece of information is, is that we revised some of the maps, which I've included in your packet. We'll send them to them in color, but I've included black and white. And I want to point out that on one of the sheets um, for the um, maps is a, um, it's actually the last map in your packet. Um, there's a large parcel that's in the city's name, but also includes the sanitary sewer ponds out in the old South Falls area. And the sewer ponds are actually owned by the North Cooch Sanitary Sewer District. Um, and they have a separate description, they have ownership. I have met with the sewer district board and they've authorized annexation, but we can't include them as part of this process because we can only use city owned properties. I bring it up because the map on the county um, GIS system does not show this separation of parcels between the sewer ponds and then the city owned property directly to the east of it. So our map reflects that. So I need to coordinate with the county's um, GIS people to make sure that their map reflects the separation in ownership between those two before we submit it to the state. Just for the council's information, um, I believe it was Minnesota, no, it's the Office of Administrative Hearings that takes the applications from municipalities that want to move forward with annexation. They refer it to the Minnesota Department of Transportation that verifies the legal descriptions correspond to um, the contiguous municipal boundaries and those types of things. And so that's why we want to make sure that the maps make that review easy for MnDOT. So um, I'll be submitting these to um, the county tomorrow or Wednesday, hopefully. I'll work with their GIS personnel uh, to make sure that, there's, uh, uh, that they can modify their map. And then once they do that, I'll submit this for consideration by the state, and I hope to do it in the next couple weeks, but it's just dependent on 
uh, how soon the county is able to do that. So that's for council information. I do have one related action item. Um, the applications by state law or rule require an application fee. When we submitted this a couple years ago or a year and a half ago, the fee was $600. So I'm just asking for a motion from the council to authorize a check be prepared um, to the office of administrative hearings um, for the $600 or if the amount's been changed for whatever the amount is to uh, allow us to submit the application for consideration. Okay, so the uh, after hearing what the city attorney or city administrator has discussed about the annexation, do we have a motion to um, allow a check to be drafted in the amount of $600 or more to submit the application? Yes, I would like that motion. We have a motion. Fine. We have a we have a motion by <laughs> Councillor Bowler. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. We have a second by Councillor Kraus. Discussion. Hearing none, call the question. Aye. 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 No vote. Yes. Motion carries five zero. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Uh, city Attorney. Am I unmuted now, so you can hear me? You totally are. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, in your packet uh, was a summary uh, of the uh, pending criminal cases. Uh, there have been four that are uh, fully resolved uh, and corrected, and we have uh, a dozen that are still pending. Uh, interestingly, uh, one of those has actually been corrected, but the individual refuses to pay the uh, $150 administrative fee. So. Uh, we need to proceed uh, with that uh, as a criminal case. Uh, in, in another uh, one, uh, there's a lady that's uh, working on it. Uh, uh, the, the issue was she uh, uh, had some vehicles that uh, needed to be removed, and, and she actually uh, failed to show up for one of her court hearings. So bail was set at $150. So uh, she posted the bail, so uh, the 150 in her case is sitting there waiting for us. Uh, hopefully, she'll get it resolved, and then that one can be closed. Uh, there haven't been any new cases started uh, since Jared Baldwin uh, kept working on on these because of his uh, uh, surgery. Um, but now, this time of the year, there's really not. Uh, much that's going to be accomplished uh, by way of cleaning yards uh, and things. I think most of the vehicles uh, have been uh, removed except for those that we have pending. We did have uh, a uh, uh, hearing uh, on a uh, case where the city had issued an order on a home where there had been a fire uh, and the uh, homeowner appeared at that hearing uh, expressed a desire to try to fix it, uh, and we agreed to that. Uh, I agreed as a, as city attorney because uh, obviously we'd rather have it fixed and brought up to code rather than having to go in and, and uh, tear it down at the expense of the city. Uh, so the court issued the order uh, but gave the homeowner 90 days to make the corrections uh, and uh, I want to estimate that maybe about 20 of those days has transpired, so uh, there's probably another 70 days or so that that homeowner uh, has to make the corrections, and, and even then, we wouldn't be doing any demolition until spring, I'm sure, so uh, uh, that uh, case will be resolved uh, one way or the other, uh, Steve, and that's really uh, all I have by way of report tonight, unless there's some questions. Well, uh, I don't think that we're going to be doing any teardowns, period, anymore. We don't have anywhere to bring them, so uh, that's not on the table right now for the city. Well, and, and you know, I guess we're not uh, we're not required by this court order to tear it down, but we we will have the uh, uh, option of doing that uh, uh, if we choose, and it's my understanding that. Uh, if any of that were to happen going forward, we'd have to pay the fees to the county to put the debris in their uh, uh, area, uh, and we may not want to do that. Correct. Please. I think at that point, too, though, that we should consider 
get, getting out of it totally and because we got private contractors that want to do that yeah i mean i should we should be hauling stuff even to the county and paying just we pay the county they don't have to pay us as much as a private contractor it's a private contractor that's got to make a living so i think we're cutting into somebody's income there if we continue this after it's closed yeah that, that's my working theory mm -hmm. on it as well does anyone else have any questions for the city attorney please yeah um mr deach here Councilor deach i guess i would like to see more criminal cases per pursued um it seems like we're at a standstill the handout that we receive every month is the same names the same details um and, and i know i, I talked uh, i left a message for adam over the weekend about two places that should be followed up that have been going on for two three years that need to be cleaned up and it still can be cleaned up with this warm weather we have something should be done it's just basically picking up garbage and and straightening out some soffits tearing down a fence and that can still be done this time of year and if they're not i i would like to see them followed up with the court case well that's fine uh counselor deach uh, i'm happy to commence criminal cases uh against uh any properties uh, that i'm instructed to uh so uh, uh you know i'm i'm in the office tomorrow if, if you want to uh come by and and let me know of some specific properties you want me to proceed on i'm happy to do that okay I'm willing to do that. I'll have to talk to Adam first and see what happened, if anything, today. But thank you. Yep. Any other questions for the city attorney? Actually, I have a question. Mr. Shimon, so if, if we take this individual to the jury trial over $150, do we get our court fees back for that too? Or, I mean, literally we're going to a jury trial over 150 dollars well it doesn't need to be a jury trial if i if i certify it as a petty misdemeanor uh then uh, the, the maximum penalty is 300 uh and there uh, is uh, no right to a jury trial uh, at that point um uh so the uh you know but but then uh, they'd have the option if they uh, uh, if they paid the three hundred dollars they they wouldn't necessarily be required to uh, clean up the property I guess the the and, and there aren't any I mean there's attorneys fees but there aren't any costs uh, there are no costs uh, that go to the city if somebody has a jury trial okay you'd be paying my attorneys fees and those attorneys fees in criminal cases never get uh, put back on the defendant even if they're found guilty but the advantage that we have uh, uh, in a criminal case and if we have a jury trial uh, uh, which would be my thought that we should allow them to have jury trials because then if they're convicted there's 90 days in jail hanging over their head and if they don't clean uh, the property up to our satisfaction the judge has the option of putting him in jail for it. So, I mean, there's a real hammer over their head. Uh, you know, if we, uh, uh, so I don't think there's really much advantage to us avoiding that. But, I mean, all of these, um, you know, from a financial standpoint, when you factor in what the city's paying for attorney's fees, from a financial standpoint, you're going backwards, no question. Right, to um, clarify, it but th clearly states it's been corrected but the individual refused to pay the hundred and fifty dollars, so jury trial set for two seven twenty one. It's correct. Yeah, well, I, I I would say in that particular case, we would probably be wise to uh, certify it as a petty misdemeanor, so the maximum penalty would be three hundred dollars, and then it would just be a court trial. Okay. In, in that in that case, yeah, you know, where it's already been corrected and they just refused to pay the fee, uh, our certifying as a petty misdemeanor rather than a misdemeanor uh, that would be uh, a wise uh, course of action and, and that's what I intend to do in that particular case thank you Councillor Deach had a follow-up on that I no, think I, no. I agree with the attorney if he's been fined we should follow up on it otherwise it sets the precedent why pay the fine they're gonna drop it anyway oh no that's I agree 
He's on the right track. The, the, yeah, the posture that, I, that I've taken with all these criminal cases uh, uh, is that uh, if, they, uh, if we have to start a criminal action and then they correct it after the commencement of the action, uh, we've been requiring to pay that $150 fee. Uh, you know, in the, in the ordinance, and even getting a notice, you know, theoretically, we could still impose that $150 fee if they if they corrected it after getting a notice, but we've never done that. Um. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the city attorney? Hearing none, we'll move on to fire chief. You, you have anything tonight? Okay. Uh, reports of the mayor, council committees, boards, and commissions. Uh, the only thing I have is uh, I do have a list of uh, open commissions and committee vacancies that uh, are open starting in January. Uh, there are three open positions on the Charter Commission. Uh, and, and that's not to say I'm not going to reappoint uh, some of these people, but I just want people in our community to know what is available. There are uh, three open positions in our Charter Commission. What that organization does is they review and look at our city charter, and that is what essentially governs our city. Our city council doesn't make the rules for the city charter, the Charter Commission does, and then that's the rules that we, we have to, uh, um, as city, um, city councilors and the mayor have to abide by. So we have three openings for the Charter Commission. We have one opening on the Fire Civil Service Commission. We have one opening on the Housing and Redevelopment Authority. We have uh, two openings on the Library Board of Trustees. We have two openings on the North Cooch Area Sanitary District. We have three openings on the Planning Commission. We have one opening on the Police Civil Service Commission. We have three openings on the Recreation Commission. We have two openings on the Zoning Board of Appeals. And we have one opening on the Airport Commission. Um, so those are the openings that we have. Uh, the office, uh, City Hall office does have uh, um, applications for appointment. Um, if you're interested in applying for any of those positions, please um, please do so, and the appointments will be made at the beginning of January. So I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that we have those. As for anything else, um, all of our boards and commit. Oh, uh, we do have a uh, a public works meeting tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, I will be there via um, internet, but I'll be there probably by two in real life. So I will be there. So should we change it to two? If you want to, you can. Okay. That's okay. It works for me. I'll, cut, I'll just talk to Ted. Does it work for you at two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Works for me at two o'clock then. So if two o'clock works better for you. Let's yeah. do it at two then. Okay. okay. I was really Ted? trying to do it on TV. You let Ted? Huh? Let no. No, you do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> uh, and I have nothing else. Uh, audience, is there uh, anybody in the audience that wants to bring something forward to the council? Don't hear anything. With that being said, immediately following this me meeting, we do have a truth and taxation meeting. Uh, with that being said, our next regular city council meeting will be Monday, December 21st at 5.30. This meeting is adjourned.